again in the state to pay their debts. And this is happening across the country. There's so many bills in Montana. Um, I think there's one in Arizona now. There's multiple states across the country. And we're seeing states standing up. There's another key, key point I want to make is that some people, when they talk about the military doing what's right, some folks have the mistaken idea that the military should march on Washington, D.C. and, you know, go root out that den of vipers and, and fix the problem. And that's a, a terrible mistake. If that's going from the frying pan into the fire. Uh, throughout history, republics, from the, from the Roman Republic on, and we see this in banana republics all the time in Central America, they go from, they, they, they tend to go from a, a worshiping executive, a king or a president who claims all power and becomes all presidente. They go from that or to a cabal of generals. And they say, well, the only way to stop this, you know, first being president is to run to the generals and to make that fundamental error and wind up in a military coup. In this country, if the military would step in and, you know, march on Washington, D.C. and arrest the president and arrest Congress, et cetera, for violating their oath, the military would violate their oath because they have no authority under our Constitution to do that. You would wind up with martial law under the generals rather than martial law under the president. Both are illegitimate. The answer the founders gave us is that the states have an obligation to stand up. Uh, when Jefferson and Madison were opposing the Alien and Sedition Acts back in, in, in 1798, they didn't go to General Washington and retire from him and ask him to come out of, you know, from Mount Vernon, you know, please, General, go, you know, go be a military coup to stop the Federalists. They didn't do that. They went to the state legislatures and said, state legislators, you have a responsibility under the Constitution to defend that line of separation of powers that is articulated in our Tenth Amendment and stand up and interpose yourselves between uh, a violating, the Constitution violating federal government and your people in the states. And that's what they did. The Kentucky and Virginia resolutions show us the correct constitutional path. And so I, I really urge people to focus on your states. Focus on your states in the sense of, of serving state sovereignty, which many states are. Um, in fact, right now, we just found out today that the, the Democratic governor of Montana has said that Montana is going to defy the feds and allow the hunting of wolf packs that are, that are preying on elk herds. And so you're seeing, even the Democratic um, governor, he knows which way, which way the wind's blowing, he understands the people of Montana want him to interpose himself. And he also uh, signed the Made in Montana gun bill this last year. And so there, there is already a sign of resistance in the states. Idaho, in fact, just today I heard the Idaho uh, legislature uh, passed through their house a nullification of the Obamacare Act. And we just heard the Alaska governor has said that in light of the recent ruling in Florida, uh, the federal court ruling the Obamacare unconstitutional, he would consider it a violation of his oath to enact Obamacare in Alaska. He's not going to do it. So we're seeing uh, state resistance to a lot of the violations that are coming out of Washington, D.C. That is critical. That's where the focus of your effort needs to be. But also, in the physical sense, we have got to get squared away as individuals, as families, and the biggest Achilles heel we have is, is food. Most Americans do not have food storage. Our grandparents grew up sitting, sitting food for the winter, canning and things like that, and growing their own gardens. We don't do that anymore, by and large. Folks in the rural areas still do. Uh, members of the LDS Church do store food. But we really need to get the idea in our heads, look, we have to enact our own strategic grain reserves as individuals, as families, as neighborhoods. And so that's where our focus should be, is making sure that we're squared away and prepared, making sure that our communities are squared away and prepared. Just imagine there's a, a collapse of the dollar, and there's no more money to pay, to pay the firemen, no more money to pay police officers, no more money to pay anyone who, who uh, takes a paycheck. And you're going to rely on volunteers. Half our fire departments already in this country are volunteers. I served on one. So that's already a model we can look at and say, okay, we the people can fill that void. Even if there's no money at all, we can take care of our own security, our own fire protection, and as I said, even our own military strength should be in our states and revitalize state militia. So um, that's really the main point we're going to be focusing on for the future of oath keepers, and I'll wait for the question and answer period in case anybody has any particular questions about that. Thank you very much, Stuart. And um, okay, folks, I'd like to now introduce um, Dr. Richard Davis. Uh, Dr. Davis um, has formed a company called Patriot Storm and the Sue the Fed movement. Uh, 
Patriot Storm intends to sue the Federal Reserve via class action lawsuits all across this country. Uh, visit suethefed.com and please welcome a contributor to uh, the Asset Preservation Institute and another patriot, and my friend Dr. Richard Davis. Thank you, John. I appreciate it very much. Uh, can you hear me okay? Uh, I hope everyone can yes, hear Dr. me anyway. I, uh... Okay, great. We hear you, Dr. Davis. Well, Everything's fine. Excellent. We're having a bit of a snowstorm out here in California, uh, probably the same one that uh, uh, Stuart, uh, I mean that uh, Kirk had uh, today. We've been having it for a few days here, so uh, it's been very interesting because we've been having the rolling blackouts here in California uh, because they've been shutting down all the coal-fired the coal -fired, uh, power plants, and uh, we've been hearing a lot about that across the country, certainly in the east, but I, I never thought I would see it here in California, but uh, here we are. And I think it bespeaks of a number of things that are happening, and I was asked to talk about the Federal Reserve, but the Federal Reserve is really about our monetary system, and our monetary system is in the process of being collapsed. It's not collapsing, it is being collapsed. It is being done by design. This is what a lot of people have a very hard time understanding, is that the Federal Reserve is not part of our government. It is an independent, private corporation, just like anyone's company that they may work for. It's a private company. So is the Federal Reserve. Therefore, the Federal Reserve is only responsible to its stockholders. And as the process unwinds and people start to learn about, you know, who are these owners? You know, how is the Fed controlled? Uh, I think that they'll be amazed to find the, the answers to these questions. I was, because the Federal Reserve is actually owned by foreign interests. It is not predominantly owned by Americans, although it controls the American monetary supply, it controls the issuance of uh, credit and currency, and it controls the interest rates. So we haven't had a free market, really, since 1913. And this is one of the things that we're vastly opposed to in terms of what the Federal Reserve has done. Because they were brought in under the guise of doing this for America. This was supposed to be done for you and me in order to stabilize prices, provide greater uh, employment and stability, etc. And they've done none of that. In fact, everything that I, I've learned about the Federal Reserve in the last few years has been such a shock. My initial response every time I learn something new is, no way. I can't believe that this could possibly be true. But as you look into it and as you get the actual documents, not the propaganda that's being presented today, the actual documents. You know, you go back and you look at the law, you go to the, the, the old websites with the, the, the photo pictures of, of the actual acts that were passed, and you find out that this is the largest criminal organization on the planet. Let me repeat that. This is the largest criminal organization on the planet. Right now, their sole mission is to take everything that you have. And that's why these gentlemen are talking about, you know, getting a hold of gold and silver. This is why Stewart's talking about, you know, a new mercantile system where it's based on barter, where we can trust each other and not trust the federal government and certainly not trust the Fed. Because what's happened is the Fed has grown in power. It has basically bribed and manipulated its way into the halls of Congress, which they now completely control, and the major mega corporations, the global corporations, that are basically globalizing us into an effort to create, as we were talking about earlier, these SDRs. But the SDRs are just a symptom of what's happening. What we're seeing is a massive push right now of this globalizing agenda, which is trying to take the sovereign states, the sovereign nations, and take them apart piece by piece. And if you recall, one of the great sayings of the Illuminati, the global the New World Order, I actually call them now the predator class. I don't call them the elites. I don't think they deserve that kind of a name. You know, and they're not the New World Order, they're the New World Disorder. They are the predator class. They are the apex hunters, and they are out to take us for everything that we have. And it's, I, I know that it sounds incredible, but if you simply do the work, just go in and just do some very basic internet searches, you will come to find out that all of the things that we're talking about, all the people in this group, uh, we, we may sound like we are you know, extremists. Actually, we're trying to bring people back to the Constitution. We're trying to bring people back to the only piece of hope, the only ray of hope 
that we have as a nation is to 